Well, we're at the SME Conference here in Phoenix, Arizona. It's 22 February, 2016, and we're here with Stan Keith, and Stan's a well-known geologist in Arizona. He's worked all across the world. He's gonna be telling us about graphene deposits in western Arizona. Stan, before you get onto that, tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are. Well, you pretty much summarized it. But yeah, I've uh, done gold exploration, oil and gas exploration, copper huh? exploration, and most lately, uh, graphene exploration. And graphene, as I understand it, is a really new mineral that's just been discovered 2005, 2006 by the, by the Brits. And, and tell me something about right, that. Right, but, but we've actually been using graphene uh, when we were kids. Uh, the pens, what you were calling graphite pencils turned right. out to actually be graphene pencils. Well, what's the difference between graphite and graphene? Well, graphite is a completely crystalline rock right, that when right. you x-ray it, you get a nice hexagonal uh, x-ray diffraction pattern. Whereas graphene, when you x-ray that, mm -hmm. um, it's basically x-ray amorphous. You don't get a pattern, although I was recently told that it might be eligible for mineral status because okay. um, if you shoot it what is perpendicular to its layering or its right. sheeting, you do get a pattern, but if you shoot parallel to the pattern, you don't. And can you hold that, can you show that to the camera so that the audience can get a sense of what it looks like on the, on yeah, the surface of that graphene? Yeah, this is a nice piece of graphene, especially this black seam that you see here. Okay. And this one's been folded up, and, and this is actually kind of an important observation because you need a certain amount of tectonics or mm -hmm. deformation to help make this stuff. Okay. Um, and its properties are similar to graphite, but they're somewhat different? No, they're, they're quite a bit different than uh, okay. the two Russians who found this working for a British lab in 2005 got a Nobel Prize for this. Wow. And they did this simple field test, which got helped get us going on it. You can see that I've got here a Scotch. piece of Scotch tape. Yep. But you'll see these little black right. flecks. I can certainly see that. Or flakes in it. That's actually the graphene. Okay. It's called exfoliation. So you just take a piece of tape, press it onto the surface here, and then pull, pull it, it off. off. Right. And rather than getting hair back, you get these graphene flakes. Okay. And um, that's and what what applications are there for graphene? Okay, so graphene is uh, once they were able to isolate it and start mm -hmm. doing the testing on it, they found that it had all sorts of so-called miracle properties. Okay, which we've actually been following up with geophysical <laughs> testing. Uh, it's uh, we just finished some. Uh, test with Zong Engineering. Okay. Uh, this is an extremely geophysically unusual rock. So one of the properties is that parallel to the layering again in here, it, it's this is the most conductive rock they've ever seen. Wow. And it's also the most chargeable rock they've ever seen. So these electrical properties are more competitive. Uh, than silicon as a conductor in microchips or as a capacitor uh, in batteries. Sure. Uh, the people are very seriously looking at it. It's also the strength of the sheets. It's some of the strongest material on the planet. Wow. And uh, so there's a lot of, of potential use for this. So what we've done is that once we realized what we had, we've, we've been... Uh, following this up with geophysical studies, okay. uh, drill hole studies, trying to characterize this in a fairly conventional way as a large, uh, and one of the good things about it is it's flat line. Right. And it's in a topographic situation where it's easily open pitable. And you're talking about the west uh, deposits in western yeah, Arizona? Yeah, now th this is okay. the one in the Granite Wash Mountains okay. in west central Arizona. And to my knowledge, it's the there's a lot of graphite deposits out right. but it takes a lot more careful documentation to show that it, there's actually a serious graphene component. And many graphite deposits or graphene deposits are, are much steeper okay. inclined, and so it's they're harder to mine. Yeah. This is a big flat pancake in the initial geophysics that we've done, and it shows up 
lights up like a Christmas tree sure. in, the, in the geophysics. And so we're, we're expecting, uh, we're, now that we've done the testing, we're, we're hoping to act, isolate the really conductive and uh, chargeable components within this big red spot okay. that we have. Yeah. To really see where the, the higher grade graphene right. component is, right. we're pretty sure that's what what it is in terms of our geophysical testing. So we're we're pretty excited about having one of the first natural graphene uh, deposits that's been had enough testing on it to say that that's what really what it is, and not Fantastic. just another variation on graphite. So what's the next step in the exploration process or the development process? Well, to see how big it is. Okay. Uh, so we're doing, you know, going to be doing conventional geophysics, conventional um, drilling, and we're, we're trying to also develop a way of assaying for graphene content. Okay. And uh, if we can do that, yeah. it'll be a little bit easier than what we're doing now, which is to do Raman spectra, then okay. figure out how much of the graphite component is graphene, sure. and then we can get a good graphite analysis. Those are available from conventional labs. And then by difference, figure out how much graphene we have. But it would be much better to have an actual you bet. assay for a, what it amounts to be a a benzene sheet. Okay. And are you guys working with folks in the minerals industry who are interested in this and interested in using it? We are. We have an investment team that is, okay. is putting money into it and we're making contact. Uh, our next thing is to actually go to some graphene conferences and, and try there to find... There are graphene conferences. Yeah, there are. Okay. And uh, connect with the people that are doing the experimentation. I just sure. met one at this conference. He's a good friend of mine, Pete Knudsen, and, and they, they're doing a lot of graphene research up in at the um, University of Mon or the uh, School of Mines in uh, Helena, not Helena, but uh, Butte, Montana. Butte, Montana, right. And so we'll, I'd like to talk with him a little bit more about sure. this. Because basically, this is really an emerging technology. Right. They, they haven't really established the market for graphene yet in terms of its exact usages. Yeah, they're still right. researching it. And we, we have, what we want to do is establish we've got a big occurrence of this, and then we'll try to start figuring out how to get it out of here in mm -hmm. terms of uh, one, one idea is that you can grind this up a little bit and vibrate the, uh, oh, sure. yeah. the graphene nice out of the rock right. and then somehow agglomerate it, but that's, that's going to require a lot more. So there's a lot of work yet to be done. A lot, a lot of work to be done, but it's... Uh, well, it's interesting and exciting that there's a deposit here in Arizona. There is, absolutely, yeah. and it could be a very big one. Very good. Because another another uh, geophysical feature of this is that it's uh, they were blown away. It was the most magnetically dead rock that they've wow. ever seen. Okay. And we have a lot of really low magnetic low anomalies that are not part of what we're currently investigating. So sure. there could be more of these in the immediate area. Very good. So we're just starting to scratch the surface of okay. this. Okay. Excellent. What are we missing that for as we're finishing this up? Is there something else that you want to add that we haven't chatted about? Uh, yeah. This this uh, is, occurs in a cluster of other deposit types. It's, okay. it's in a thrust fault terrain, so we're in the lowest floor. All right. Next floor up is uh, is uh, there's a lot of pyritic mineralization associated with some young dikes that have come up, and we have some drill holes not right here, but about a quarter of a mile away that have hit gold. And we're in the process of assaying uh, the pyritic zone above right. this for gold. So it's possible that uh, if we do get gold, that we have a gold deposit sitting on top of a graphene deposit. Oh. Well, there you if, go. <laughs> and if all that's not enough, this really sounds <laughs> like gold. We have a, a kyanite deposit also okay. in the next plate up sure. that um, we're, at, we're having tested out east right now to see if American kyanite wants to come in and have a, a look at what we, what we have in kyanite. So it sounds like you have your hands full in western Arizona. Yeah, so as Grand you mine down to this yeah. stuff here, there's things on the way, so, yeah. which normally doesn't happen. No. Very good. Dan, thanks for coming on the Arizona Mining Review. And have you a bet. great conference. Okay, we will. Okay. <laughs> Underwriters of the Arizona Mining Review include Mining Foundation of the Southwest, 
a nonprofit organization based in Tucson, Arizona, working to educate the public about mineral resources and the mineral extraction and processing industries.